And welcome back to Scav Talk, everyone. Today's episode, we're going to be catching you up on some minor Tarkov stuff, but mainly some of the other things that are going on amongst the Tarkov community. It's kind of weird. I was telling someone the other day, it feels a bit like a fever dream with all the Tarkov creators playing all these various games and not Tarkov. And after that, maybe we'll talk about some of the other stuff tangentially related, such as Sony doing some uh, very shady, eh, not shady, but just kind of like unethical stuff to its consumers and buyers, uh, 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 customers of the game, and um, Great Zone Warfare performance. I got some stuff. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. New location for the exactly. audio listeners. Exactly. New location on the road, <laughs> but you know, want to make sure that we get back on track with the schedule. And I have the ability here to at least do something. I brought like, I brought those, you know, some pieces to be able to mm -hmm. record. Like we can't go live really, but um, we can at least like record something, which is fine. I'm like sat in another room. I like went to the uh, desk. was just like, hey, do you have like some random place that I could just be? They're like, uh, not really in this one, but you know, we've, we've got like a room that's not being used, if that's okay. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. So I'm just like sat at the desk. <laughs> we, um, we, went to, we went to Legoland today. So that's, oh, that's cool. where we are. Oh, that's so we're cool. on a little bit of a kind of trip around the UK. We're like mm -hmm. seeing some of my wife's old friends tomorrow and seeing one of my friends. Um, and yeah, we're just like going lots of different places and doing different things we want to do like down in the south because it just takes a while now to get down here. Nothing for you Americans, but, um, you know, on the British scale of things, it's like, you know, most of the way across the country. Mm. And uh, yeah, so today was Legoland Day, which is which is very good. Um, I, I like I never went as a boy. Actually, my wife went when she was little and she was like, oh, it's the best thing ever. You should go. And it was, it was actually really cool. So we've been doing that today. And uh, yeah, the other ones all tucked up in bed and, <laughs> I've, you know, gone off toddling down the corridor to come speak to church. <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny. That's cool. So Yeah, that's why I'm, I'm not going to be on streams or anything this week. I'm going to be back on, on Friday. But uh, I did get a chance to check out the latest and greatest talk of copy slash alternative <laughs> slash you know, whatever you want to call it these days, which was Arena Breakout Infinite, which I think it's probably important to start off talking about that like right from the get-go, just because mm -hmm. uh, it kind of frames the context around like everything else that's, that's coming. Um, so this is a game, some of you may not be familiar with it, and some of you will have heard about it before. Um, Arena Breakout itself is, I was going to say was, but it is a mobile mobile game and it's basically a copy of eft pretty much like you know not not one for one but it's like the the, the game loop is the same and the style is kind of the same it's a bit like lost light i think lost light actually deviates from the formula more so from what you've said to me a bit more um, yeah, from what i've seen but anyways. but again like that's like that's very much like a tarkov clone as well in many ways right like the game loop is kind of similar and the modding is like kind of similar and the way that you fight people is like kind of similar it's like that's the thing, Arena Breakout is just like closer. Now, I did a video actually about it and it was sponsored at the time, but I did that because uh -huh. yeah, I thought it was uh, I thought it was actually decent. Like I got to play it first. I said, look, I'm not deciding on it until I get to play it. And I played it and I, I had, you know, I didn't really have high hopes. And uh, I was honestly surprised. Like the worst part about it is the fact that you've got to try and press all the buttons on the mobile phone screen, which for the tutor like, you know, a Tarkov style game, it's just tough. You've got like check mag reload like aim ads all the goes it's all on the on the screen and mm. you can customize it all like where you want so if something feels awkward you can just you can make the buttons bigger and smaller you can make them more or less transparent like wherever you want the buttons to be okay you can put them there so i was like okay this is you know this is actually pretty good like they've thought of all of the downsides to mobile and i like, tried to mitigate them but you know the thing is for me like i'm at home all the time so i don't really have like long commutes where I need to be playing it or like I'm not away for, you know, nights at you know, conferences or whatever. It's just not really something that I do particularly. Yeah. So I, I've just got my PC there. So why would I play something else on the phone when I can play on PC? Yeah. So the, the, the people behind, um, I can't remember what the studio is like technically called, but um, it's ultimately owned by Tencent. So they've yeah. got, you know, big backing. It's like a Chinese developer. And they have brought out Arena Breakout Infinite, which is the PC version of the original Arena Breakout. And like it's 
the same game, but obviously it's polished up. I think it's on Unreal. Like I, I tried to find out which version it was. Loads of people said it to me in chat, oh, it's Unreal 5, it's Unreal 5. And I was like, I'm not sure if it is. Um, somewhere on the internet it said it was like Unreal 4 point something. Um, yeah. But I couldn't find like a proper source for it. I don't know, I'm not sure. But I'm, I'm not sure if it is 5. But either way, it's on Unreal. And um, I was actually slightly nervous before I played it because, you know, we'd literally just come out of Grey Zone. Um, yeah. where, you know, it was basically just like the spanker of all PCs. You know, everybody who even thought they had like remotely decent hardware and Grey Zone is just like, nah, <laughs> you're going to have to try better than that. So I was like a little bit concerned because the minimum graphics on this game were not like, too, it wasn't too crazy, I don't think. I think it was recommended like a 2060 maybe or something. I, I think that was like maybe the recommended GPU. I, I forget. But it was like not not insane. But there was like a creator um guide as well and i think it was like to try and make it look good or whatever but it was like yeah you basically need like a 3080 and like 64 gig of ram and i was like oh my god like is this game actually just gonna yeah 30 fps my computer like i'm, I'm actually a bit worried but um when i boot stuff because i did play like a stream of it i didn't get a chance mm-hmm. to do any more because i did like it came out literally on the wednesday at like a really awkward time it was like two in the morning yeah um my time which was like 10 p.m. I guess like Eastern, so mm-hmm. it was just like a bit of an awkward time for everybody. So anyway, by the I was just like, well, I'm gonna miss the start, so I may as well just I'll just play what I normally do. So I did like one until you know half past four, like I, I usually do in my afternoon, which is good because I think it sort of ironed out some of the early glitches. Plus it was a closed test, so the servers weren't too crazy. But I mean, the game itself is like the same. The, the maps that are on there are the same as on mobile. So the, the the beginner map is called Farm, and you play that. It's a little bit like, I guess, uh, customs sort of like it, it's, it's i don't know it's kind of like customs and woods sort of blended together i, I think it's um it's kind of hard to describe but like yeah the, the maps are different but um i wouldn't say that necessarily is like cohesive as like bsg maps they're quite mm. they're quite like gamey it's just like oh here's a building here and a field there and other. it doesn't necessarily feel like a real place i think that's the thing that always gets me about Tarkov maps is they feel like a small subset of like somewhere bigger like a bigger world and uh, I, I was I was like that, but um, either which way, it like it ran really well. Um, I did have to do like a little bit of tinkering. I had to like cap the frame rate to stop it from causing like problems on the stream because I'm still in the process of moving stuff across to like a dual stream setup, which is actually working by the way. As a, as a very small tangent, I have moved Twitch over to a second computer. It's not very good. It's this one I inherited, and um, I managed to wipe it and then got this like teleport thing working which is quite cool so you can basically take a scene from one obs <laughs> and just move it through your network to another obs which is pretty neat so it basically just takes like i didn't have to because that's what makes it so easy like i just take the scene that i have which i normally broadcast and have the multi-stream plugin but i just use teleport and it sends that scene to the other obs on the other pc and then that was doing twitch the problem with that computer is it's a it's a stick uh, some Intel thing, like a 6500 or whatever from God knows when, and uh, R9380X, I think. So it's oh, like wow. old tech. So it's like, yeah. you know, decent when it was, you know, new, but like it's pretty old. I don't know how old those things are now. Like it's like nine nine years, eight years, nine years. Like it's, it's, it's quite old. Um, But the, yeah, the funny part about it is that you can, and I'm using the AMD encoder, which is something that I'd like kind of forgotten even existed. <laughs> Um, because it takes too much CPU to like bring the broadcast yeah. in over network. Oh, um, really? It's in quite high quality, yeah, which is quite funny. Wow. And uh, so I'm using the GPU encoder on like the uh-huh. the 580, uh, which maxes it out completely for Twitch, uh, just Twitch in like 936. But uh, it's enough, and it actually looks just as good as it does coming out of like the MVENC encoder, because like yeah, the bit rate is really the problem, not the encoder. Um, so anyway, that's moved. Twitch off to the other PC, which is good because that was like causing that was the issues I had in Grey Zone, um, and it also was the same issues I used to have on Streets and Lighthouse, where mm. I get the encoder kicked out. Yeah, yeah. Um, so even if it does like lag, YouTube still like stays because it's like the primary one. Anyway, so long story short, that's like that's kind of working. So I, I got that set up, and I had to cap like a little bit of frame rate stuff, but I set my cap in um, Arena Breakout at the Infinite at like hundred FPS. and it was basically hundred FPS the whole time. I think like without the cap, I was getting somewhere around like. It depended like 105 up to like 120, but uh, I didn't change the settings. I had it all on high, so like it actually ran really well. Um, so yeah, I mean, I so I only played a couple of hours. Um, I guess like the the very early takeaways about Arena Breakout for me is like there's we can go into it in a bit more detail, but like mm-hmm. 
for very surprising stuff. And I don't know whether some of this is just for the beta, which was you can buy from the flea market literally at level one, and there's no flea market restrictions whatsoever. So it's a little bit like mm -hmm. old Tarkov, like pre flea restrictions. Yeah. Pre 1212, like before inertia, before scav karma, before like any of this stuff. So it's, mm -hmm. it's like it's like old Tarkov. And it's funny because in some ways I actually yeah, they're like, you know, Arena Breaker is definitely like a, a copy, and I will talk a bit more about like, you know, how how copy in a little bit. But um it's it's quite funny really because in some in some ways I can see the two games like kind of like not competing with each other in, in sort of. In that they sort of seem to be doing different things. Like yeah. Tarkov has moved on a lot from mm -hmm. where like Arena Breakout is. And if that's the game that they want to to make and push, it's like the old school labs, PvP chat, you know style like people who just want to play and get in and shoot stuff and can you know buy whatever like it's that old style of gameplay that we used to have is kind of there in arena breakout but like so much stuff has changed in base eft that it's yeah. not really the same game now right it's, it's like slower it's got you know it's got inertia in it like the gameplay loop is like a lot more stretched out because of the flea bands and things which you know some people really disagree with that stuff so i think like maybe because they've been presumably been developing this for a while because it just takes a long time to make this stuff you know even if this has been in development for like two years or whatever based mm. on what they already had on their mobile game Tarkov itself has like moved on so much in two years that they've like the divergence is actually quite stark so i think like my biggest issue with the really breakout like as smooth as it kind of feels like some people didn't like the graphics or whatever but i think it looks perfectly fine i think mm -hmm. it's literally just about the game loop being so so short like we've we've seen yeah. this play out in EFT where it's like okay why do we play the game okay well, we play it to like grind the stuff and have things to do the hideout whatever that like max hideout you know get to like keep a capo like whatever it is that you decide you want to do whereas if the game is just like oh you can buy anything you want at level one it's just money then you're either grinding money or like buying meta stuff to kill people and we've, we've seen that story in tarkov already and a lot of the stuff that's been brought into tarkov is to try and mitigate that especially in the early game like flee up to level 15 you know try to bring in um you know, slow people down a bit like pushing ammo out to like higher level traders i mean that's partly to do with with armor but and then like flea market bans so you can't just buy stuff straight off the rip um so it's, it'll be interesting to see like I, I think we have to take that context in mind when we look at people's hot takes being like oh this game's great i played for like you know 20 hours and it's and it's awesome it's like okay well let's try 100 and then 150 when you're a full-time streamer and you're streaming, you know, 10, 12 hours a day and you've played for a week and a half slash two weeks and yeah. now, like, it's just PvP, we'll see how you feel then. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, that, that's, that's honestly, I think, is, like, the biggest weakness of it because we, mm. we already know this, is, this will happen. Like, this happened in Tarkov already and the games are so similar that this will happen to people playing this game too. It's almost inevitable unless there's, like, crazy events and stuff and i guess some people have said that um i'm gonna finish my like monologue in a sec but some okay. people have said that there are like fun events in the mobile one things like okay. um like 12 v 12 kind of like team fight kind of things which have been like you know quite enjoyable and whatever but i don't i don't know i, I don't know we'll, we'll, have, we'll have to see but um that's kind of like the very high level take for me like i guess you didn't get to play because um again for avoidance of doubt it was a closed test based on keys and they did like a bunch of competitions you could win a load of keys but then creators got a, a bunch of keys too to give out to their communities as well as getting it for themselves um which in, in and of itself is its whole own load of drama because originally i think they were going to be paying creators to play and at least like you know advertise the game in some some fashion like stream it and make some posters that you're going to be playing blah, blah blah like a lot of games do um and then there was a ton of posts about like people getting ghosted um a lot, bunch of people still got keys anyway but then i mean the, basically the long story on the short on this is that bsg gave them so much publicity that they didn't actually need to pay anyone anymore dang ain't that something which is pretty insane um yeah because bsg is like focused on you know retweeting them and like saying stupid right. stuff that they kind of ended up like accidentally screwing all the creators who were going to play it all the time guys because and like from their perspective it's like fine yeah you got so much i don't know publicity that why would you need to pay anybody now everybody knows this game exists and everyone's going to play it so 
why why bother? And I yeah, I get it. I understand them. It makes total sense. It's a bit like it it does seem a bit annoying um for some people the way that they were treated like being ghosted and mm -hmm. whatever. But um, you know that's just kind of the way things go, I guess. Especially when you speak to like hundreds of creators. But um you know I did I got a bunch of keys through um my new agency, which is uh, Creators Club, which is I think it's the same one. Well, they, it was actually, yeah, it started off with like Aqua. So it's the guy who like runs Aqua stuff, which is really cool. And uh, they've been really good so far. Um, but uh, yeah, so I had like 10 giveaways. So I did a little giveaway for that. So some people got it. But I think like outside of creators, it was it's re relatively limited and, you know, make, obviously makes the service run a lot better. Like we actually did see that in Grey Zone where the closed test, the Grey Zone that I was in, that the service ran really well. And then obviously when it went out to the public and there's 400,000 people, you get this like horrible jittering because the yeah. servers are under load, yada, yada. So, um, yeah, so there was already drama about these guys anyway, just from the creator side, because lots of people felt like very, very buttered about, you know, mm -hmm. not getting the payment that they were expecting because um, of publicity. But, so I guess, like, did you did you get to those? Did you just watch? I'm assuming you just watched. I don't know whether you got a key or anything. No, I didn't get a key. I mean, I watched you play a little bit. I watched Clem, Clementine play a little bit. Um, it looked, I mean... It looks like a bit more of a polished slash like less jank version of Last Light to me. Like Last Light is like jank quirky and like not that much polish. Uh whereas this like looks a lot more polished, less jank, and more less quirky to it. So, yeah, that probably is true. Um I, I don't know, like, is it as polished as EFT? I know people like, you know, people love to give Tarkov mm -hmm. a hard time, but there's like, there's a lot more systems in Tarkov. Um, it's, yeah. I don't know, it's in some ways, in some ways, yes, in some ways, no. Um, I mean, this is like, I mean, to be fair, this is a beta test, right? So, yeah. You know, it's, again, it's early stage, like for, for the stage that it's at, well, they've already had a mobile game mode to test like a load of the stuff out. So a lot of like, Things yeah. that would go wrong in other games, like I don't know. I mean, I don't know how much transfers over, but even just things like, um, you know, just stuff move through the inventories properly or whatever. Like mm -hmm. the inventory, like back end, is probably very similar between the two games. Right? There's no reason that it should be any different on PC versus mobile, really. Mm -hmm. Um, so stuff doesn't really go wrong there in the way that, like, you know, in Grey Zone, for example, if you remove like you're trying to like move something into your backpack like sometimes you just there's certain like areas where you just it just doesn't let you move things into them unless you scroll down and it's like they're not in the same place on the screen and like, stuff like that just doesn't happen in abi because it's just i don't know it's just more developed like they've got all of that stuff under control yeah um but i mean that stuff doesn't really happen in tarkov either like the worst you can get is like busy hands like things spinning and your know, hands are busy but um, i mean i managed to get myself locked in arena breakout so oh, how'd you know, that happen? I, I think I was I was like I think I was like reloading in the inventory and like trying to like search a bag at the same time or something and I got my character locked doing mm. that. So like none of these games are immune from it. Like, apparently there's a busy hands bug in Daisy. I didn't even know. But it's just like those kind of bugs are just like I guess it just must be hard to code all that stuff, especially when you've got the ability to like med yourself, repack a mag, search a bag, like move things around, like what is what are you allowed to do when you're doing because like, that's part part of what I was trying to figure out. It's like can I med while I'm refilling ammo? Can mm. I refill ammo while I'm searching a bag? Can I How search many? a bag while I'm refilling ammo? Like with what like right. order of things am I allowed to? Because again, in, in Tarkov, it's kind of like you can, it's like quirky stuff, right? Where it's like, mm. I can repack a mag in Tarkov and then search a bag, but you can't search a bag and then repack ammo afterwards in EFT. Like there's, they're not, the order matters because mm. some, or, some things block others. And in this game, it's like, Kind of similar. There's like some stuff that you can do, some that you really? can't do. It's like weird. Mm. It's like these these things are always complicated because they're, they're yeah they're always just like you know, but yeah I mean there's yeah there's there's other stuff um there's other like random random things in this game which is which is like interesting but um but yeah I don't know I think like hmm, where where exactly to go from here um, well let me guess, let like, me ask you yeah. this did, how long did you get to play it for like four hours like three hours and three hours. Did you have fun? Like, was it more enjoyable on a PC versus the phone? Oh, oh, 100%. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I had fun. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It was good. Okay. Was good. And, and one thing that I thought was kind of fun about it was because... Actually, this is, yeah, this is a very important question, actually. I'm glad you asked this. So it was more fun, and it was more fun in a kind of, like, 
oh, it's like feels more casual, you know, yeah. it feels more like it feels more like COD in mm-hmm. Tarkov because it's using like the old mechanics like that and it feels more coddy just in the way that you like move around like even though it is it is sort of tarkov but the inertia is like you yeah, know non-existent and like i don't know whether it really feels like old tarkov or when it does just feel more like call of duty in like a tarkov world a lot of people have said that um it feels like what they wanted dmz to be which i thought was quite interesting hmm. um but and this is the thing i i do think it's fun right now and it's interesting and cool and feels casual because we're all running around like noobs, mm-hmm. like on maps that we don't know, doing tasks, and we don't really care. Like it's a beta test. Like it's probably going to get wiped. So we just run around, build some funny guns. Like I built a meta gun, and like chat sort of gasped a collective gasp of like you've spent like you know twenty percent of your entire starting money on this like one M4, which I obviously died with. Um, but I was just like, well, it doesn't matter. It was just like messing about. It's fine. Like who cares? They're not playing this game like seriously. And I think that it's a little bit like you know tarkov when we first started playing but when the whole community was starting playing and you just like wander around customs like not knowing where you're going or wander around woods blah blah like tarkov is like so developed with such an old school player base um, yeah i did like from from the podcast i don't know if you listened to the podcast last week but, no um, i don't think so oh maybe. veritas was talking veritas was talking about some uh interesting statistics that he got sent by a a random viewer who mm-hmm. so there was like oh, there was a conversation they had about Tarkov.dev and about like the way that you access the API and the fact that you can just there's no rate limit and you can just access the API just like straight up, which is just like really crazy and you can just like pull character data which is what you see on Tarkov.dev which is like what you have on you what your skills are blah blah that's like turns out how they do it um, and V was just like well you know I, I don't care to do this stuff because I just I'm not that fast but somebody messaged him and was just like I've got a database of two billion players would you like it. <laughs> um, and so he was like, okay. So he didn't do like data analysis, but he did some like very basic, like uh-huh. let's just split out some of the data and just like spit out some stuff. So he, he wasn't like verified or anything. And there like could have been, you know, the, the list could have been sorted in such a way that he would have skewed the results, or whatever. So he assumed it was a random data set. He didn't do the like the full work on it because he couldn't be bothered okay. and it was going to take hours. But the like the short term, my favorite part about that was the um, the average player time the non-band accounts that he had on like the data sets that he, that he was looking at was anywhere between 1,100 hours and like 1,400 hours. Jeez. Wait, what? How does that, how do you get that gap for an average? Wouldn't it be? <laughs> because, because, because of the way he split the data up, he couldn't, ca- he couldn't, um, he couldn't process or, or didn't want to process all 2 million in one go. So he had them like split up into like blo- blocks of accounts to oh. make it easy to process. And he was using the kind of you know usual adage about stats, which is that you know even if you take ten percent of the of the total or whatever, it's usually representative of the whole, right? It's like mm-hmm. large numbers kinds of kind of things. Um, so, but anyway, yeah. So it was like you know depending on which block you looked at. I mean, it was pretty consistent. It was like you know one thousand two hundred, one thousand four hundred, one. So the average player has like well over a thousand hours, which is pretty nuts. Um, and but that like changes the way the game plays completely, right? Like if you want running around customs now as somebody new, if you do, if you play the game like we play Arena Breakout at the minute, you just die, and it isn't fun. Whereas like we can play Arena Breakout because nobody knows the maps. You can just like run around with an MP5. Like you play, you can play a lot more like casually because like no one's playing it like hardcore, like super serious, and knows all the angles and spots. Right. Like it's a different you. environment completely when you're all learning the game for the first time equally exactly exactly yeah. exactly because nobody's like developed the stuff that you need on all on the game sense and like the timings of where the spawns are and like yeah. all this stuff right no, no one knows any of this stuff um or at least not instinctively you know you can start to look at it and start to work some sure. of it out but it's like it's completely different to like a player base that's a thousand plus hours on average mm-hmm. whether you're playing against like it's just different um and so so i think that that has something to do with the way that it feels casual or whatever um and then yeah coming back to this like level one flea thing if you just buy anything you like once people figure out how to make money everyone's just gonna be running meta gear like they're not doing that right now because everyone's just messing about and figuring stuff out but you know as soon as people understand what they need to do it'll be the same as old tarkov so it's like buy the best ammo you can in the cheapest gun you know the cheapest gun with low recoil and then and then that'll be it so I don't know, but I mean, like I had fun. I thought it was good. I I, I thought it was quite fun. It was like it felt like um, felt kind of refreshing in some ways to play mm-hmm. that, especially coming from Grey Zone, 
because I've not been playing that much EFT. Like I did play EFT this week, but I've been playing a lot more Grey Zone. I realized like I completely messed up my muscle memory because I just like played Grey Zone without really setting my sensitivity. And because it's like a completely different game, I didn't really notice until I went back to Tarkov and I was like, oh my God, I've actually broken my muscle. So I had to like realign everything. But anyway, going from Grey Zone, because like Grey Zone is like even more milsim than Tarkov in terms of like movement. It's like very slow, hold breath, you get like no time at all. Gun sway is like way harsher than EFT. Um, because as we've said, EFT is like quite it's quite arcadey in many ways, right? And people like Clean talk about this. It's like a mill sim in name, but really it plays out more like a you know arena shooter in some ways. Like oh, yeah, it's more arcadey than God, of course, but um but this is like even further on the spectrum arena breakout than Tarkov is. And compared to Grey Zone, it's like super, super quick. So it was quite fun to go back to a game like that where you can just like sprint around that like, you have like loads of stamina, like more stamina than Tarkov, I think. Um like lots of yeah, hold breath time and yeah, it was good. I think it was it was fun. It was fun to do. Killed a bunch of players and uh, yeah, just like figuring stuff out. So I enjoyed it. Like made a few different different weapons, completed some missions. But um, I, I will say that like the missions thing. I mean, some people didn't, really didn't like it, right? Because it's like there's there's more HUD. So you got a compass mm-hmm. at the top, but that's the same as in Grey Zone. So I don't necessarily see that as like not hardcore. It's just like a thing. You can you can have a kind of hardcore game with the compass at the top, like that's fine. Like Tarkov's compass is functionally useless. Yeah. So, um, so something like Grey Sun that makes sense. Um, but then I think the so then on the maps so you've got a map, so you can bring up a map and zoom in and out, and it's got like the X fills on it, and it tells you kind of like what the X fill is. So no backpack for this one, you know this one you need oh, two thousand nice. coen or whatever. Like this one's like yellow, so like may or may not be open. You go there and then it goes red because you now know it's not open. And then these ones are green, they're always open. So like it's really obvious and really intuitive as to what's going on. And then you get given a mission and then like, I don't know if this is the case all the way through the game, but at least the early ones, it just like puts the markers on the map. So you just go to the place, do the thing. You can like mark the thing on the map so you can see it on the compass. Like it felt, I mean, it's, it's a lot easier to do. So wait, you don't have to like search or anything. The quests automatically mark it on the map for you where to go yeah does it especially show it? in the early days does it also show it when you're not in the map like a waypoint in the world you can you can waypoint it you can like toggle it so to you, like, can, you, you can yeah you can toggle like one i think you've got like one waypoint on to okay. where you're going um so it's like i had to pick up a letter or something and i like mm-hmm. went to the waypoint and i was like okay it was here somewhere and then i looked in this little boat and like okay there's the document like pick it up and then and then leave so stuff like that is a lot easier so it's like much more casual in that perspective yeah. um and then the other part of like the hard i would say which i'm like oh god i don't i'm not sure about this is as a team there's no friendly fire i'm pretty sure yeah. I think I think I'm right in saying that, and also you have like X, and you have X-ray for your teammates. Yeah, at least for their name. And that's, oh, just their name. I think so. Yes, yeah, so huh. you can't see their player like model, but you can okay. see their name like floating through walls. That is like such a strong. That's honestly probably the biggest deviation. Yeah. In many ways, and it really like upsets the balance of like solo versus squad. <laughs> um. Not that I've like really played that much of it, but like I think mm-hmm. as if as people get better, the fact that there's like no team confusion, yeah, makes I mean it makes the game like ten times easier. That's fine, but it's just like really rough for solos because like you're just gonna get pinned down and killed because they know exactly who not to shoot already. So when you do appear, then they they have the same solo intuition that you do to shoot anything that doesn't have like a floating name marker so like unless you're like you know somehow bisecting the team so you're like they're, they're behind and you're in the middle and you're like piggy in the middle or whatever like and in, unless you're in that situation it's like really obvious who to kill or who not to kill that being said what i didn't realize is that there's an auto matchmaker so if you're playing solo you can just match make with three other people and play as a squad with them okay um and they're like randoms but like you join as a group of four yeah and you can't kill each other. Um, and then yeah, there's like there's some other other random bits like you know if your teammate dies and you pick up their gear like you don't actually get their gear their gear goes back to them kind of like insurance. Um, That's oh yeah I heard cool. about that like if your teammate dies and you pick it up and take it out it just appears in their stash or something like they get it and stuff. Yeah. That's so like yeah. That's so smart. Such a good quality of life. Yeah, picture. it's very cool. It's very cool. Um, like it just makes so much sense. Yeah. But. Uh, 
yeah so that's i guess that's kind of the like the uh, the overall thoughts i mean there's like lots of like random stuff let me just actually look at what my it might spark some other thing off um i could what else did i write i could share some thoughts i've been kind of thinking about because and it will segue us into our next segment i think um So having played Lost Light, you know, it's, again, free-to-play, and having played multiple free-to-play games with microtransactions in them back in my early gamer days, um, you know, I'm kind of, like, familiar with what's coming, you know? <laughs> because when they were, like, getting all the publicity, it's like, and it's, you know, people were, con and it's free, it's like, yeah, it's totally free. Like, asterisk, I mean, it, it is free-to-play, but, of course, there's going to be microtransactions. And of course, in this closed beta, they're not showing any microtransactions, but I, if it's anything like Lost Las Light, it's going to be up the wazoo. I mean, I, I you played the mobile version. Did you have a peek at any of that stuff? And I played the mobile version. They hadn't had any in that either. Really? But apparently that came later. Um, okay. I, like, I think you might just be able to straight up buy currency. I'm not actually sure. but mm -hmm. um, I mean, the only one that I know about right now is, and I don't know if you've seen this, but you, if you play free to play, yeah, you can do it just fine. You don't get a secure container. I mean, that's interesting. I don't. Uh, I say interesting, so, but <laughs> so so basically, you can like try. You can try all the game. Like in some, like in some ways, I kind of don't mind the way it's done. So it's like you don't get a secure container on free to play. Yeah, but to get one, you have to pay a monthly subscription. Oh, ew. <laughs> Gross. And I, can't, I don't know how much it is. It's not like, I don't think it's a lot, a lot. I think it's like a couple of dollars. <laughs> and it is kind of gross. I mean, Lost Light had the same like, thing. <laughs> yeah, They're really it's like, you know, you go to play the game and it's free. And then it's like, okay, do you want to play the game seriously? Okay, well then, you know, you probably want the skill containers. So then you pay like, you know, your monthly fee or whatever to play. I sort of like, I, I kind of get it. I sort of get mm -hmm. it. I don't know. Like, I, I like. I want to hate it, and I kind of get it. I, I don't know whether like the recent BSG like fiasco mm -hmm. about like funding has just like changed the way I think about this stuff. Because I hate monthly subscription. I'm like, I'm, I'm really like anti monthly sub guy. I always have been about if, about I, everything actually. Um, I like begrudgingly pay for like Amazon Prime, even though it's like really good value for us because we order stuff constantly, and I watch the stuff on the video thing, and I use the like file upload, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, so it's like I hate monthly subs, but like yeah, just given like thinking about Tarkov and about one time payment, and then the money runs out like seven years later, and like what do you do? And then you got to do microtransactions maybe or whatever. And then like the fact monthly sub kind of like has reared its head a few times in the Tarkov discussion, and it's like, oh, do we really want that? Like I'm not sure. And so when this has appeared and gone like, okay, the game's free, but then you pay monthly sub, it's like, all right, fine. To get you know, I don't know how much it is. Like even if it's five bucks, to get the same. You know, to get to the same point that you were in in Tarkov, like with EOD or whatever, then you've got to play, pay for like 30 months. This is like, you know, you could be playing the game for like three years mm. to even get to the same period, not quite, but like, you know, two and a half years to get to the same amount of mm. money spent as in EOD. Obviously, that's without any other microtransactions, which I'm sure there's going to be some, but like, just like just on its own, yeah, as its own concept. Like, right. I don't know if I necessarily like hate it, but. So. I don't know. What I... Hmm. Man, there's so many things I could say. Mm -hmm. So, in, in, to maybe, like, help alleviate your feelings towards Tarkov's issues, speculation, speculative issues, like, we don't know 100% that their financials, but whatever. No one forced BSG to keep adding on features and take, you know, pushing things out and, and deadlines, you know what I mean? Instead of, like, because what the game was supposed to be done like years ago, and it's like, oh, mm. and and Nikita even said, like, you know, they don't want to do this long term, or whatever. And then now he's changing, it's like, no one forced them to do that, which is like also kind of crappy. Is kind of the problem with early access is like, you don't, you're not, you're buying, you're buying into a belief, you know, you don't, you don't really have any. That's the, that's the great thing about buying a game that's like finished, you know, like they can patch maybe like a day one patch. <laughs> you know bigger user base but anyways point being um 
What I really don't like about this in particular, and like, don't get me wrong with their lost light phase, and you know, I enjoyed it, but like, there was a lot of like stuff that was like completely hollowed out aside from like micro transactions, like you know. Um, I mean, the game itself was kind of crap. It's like a, probably a really bad PC port. Anyways, let me try to stay on topic here. So what I don't like about it is <laughs> this idea of like, mon like monetizing, min-maxing how they can monetize fun. Because that's, you know, fun and loose. It's like, but game mechanics are like a video game. Like, you know, it's like, imagine like you go to an art museum and you're, you pay, uh, a fee to go see an art piece and that's like you pay and every, that's how it works it's five bucks right so like you do it your friends do it you all got like the same experience whereas like a different aspect of it is like you go to the art museum you want to see an art piece but it's the same art piece but split up and it's like if you get uh, the one dollar ticket then you only get to look through an eye hole if you get the two dollar ticket then you get to look through like you know a little bit bigger of a hole and you know the premium hundred dollar one time purchase only 10 limited offer gets like the full grand experience and it's like this idea of like segmenting out to where it's like i don't know dividing people monetarily like and so but it, and ultimately it's a game it's an experience it's art as an experience and it's just i i find it like very gross when these microtransactions go this is deep and i've seen some takes on twitter and i'm just like cringing on the inside because it's like I, like yeah i i <laughs> anyways my main thoughts are you know if you want to play it play it and you know it's free to play it's like it's nice but like uh, i just don't like i mean don't get me wrong i bought stuff in lost light too uh you know but it was a really shallow game like I'm sure much like this game, the quests are going to be meaningless. Like, honestly, you could, like, engineer this so, like, deceptively. Like, you could make it, let's say you start out, you get, like, a bunch of money, a bunch of guns, and, but because you have no secure container, and, like, let's say, you know, there's no scab, whatever. I don't know. But and it, my point is, is, like, you start, you start it off, because it's also an economy game, right? You start someone off, and they have, like, a little trust fund, but they have no income and their only income is through like, you know, risk reward and, you know, gameplay and that's it. And, but you constantly offer them income if they give you money, you know what I mean? In exchange, which is like, but it's like such a, it's such a grand experience when you first start playing because you got all this money, you know, all this fun stuff. And then you slowly get poorer and poorer and they're like, Oh, don't you want to have fun again? Don't you want to buy this golden AK with level six ammo rounds? And, stomp all these noobs that's uh, i just i just think it's like very gross you know so uh, it's kind of cringe giga i know i know what you mean i know what you mean i've seen like quite a few people talking about that as well being like oh there's lots of people like running around like without anything they've already lost all their money and like if you have no secure container like you do run out quite quick because you don't have the money to support like the ammo that you probably want to buy and yada yada like i think this is the thing it's like if the game you pay once for the game and then that's that's it you know you fund the game and fine like we move on or you pay like a monthly sub like you know old wow or whatever and it's like okay that's that's also great but that's the problem it's like the monthly sub is like just the beginning with this kind of game like it's not it's not just that it's not like mm -hmm. oh the monthly subscription is our model and then maybe you could buy some cosmetics like that nah that's not how this is going to go down like this is this is the the entry, the entry yeah. ticket, the fairground, and every ride's going to also cost yeah. you a dollar yeah. or two dollars, right? Like, and I think that's the issue. It's not necessarily that monthly sub itself sucks. It's mm -hmm. that it's like intrinsically tied in with like having a skill container and not just like slowly hemorrhaging money. And then the fact that like if you are still playing free to play, then you're probably going to end up spending more money just on the stuff than you would have if you you know paid for the monthly sub. Like, yeah, it just gets it just gets confusing. But um. I mean, in some ways, like, yeah, it's was why there's been so much backlash to the whole, like, PvE thing in Tarkov, because people feel like they paid once and, they, had, you know, they were promised all the DLCs, and it's like, okay, yeah. we're, again, we're starting to, like, package up the fun and split it out, and you've got to buy Unheard Edition to get these other things, and blah, blah, blah. It, like, starts to go down that route. That's why there's such such backlash. Um, Yeah, I don't know. We'll just have to see what happens with, with that, to be honest. But, um, I mean, yeah, I don't know. For me, like, 
I mean, I'm not a big like buying stuff in game person anyway, and like, yeah. I probably wouldn't be fussed to do that. And like, I mean, I I I don't know. I I think the game look, it seemed okay, but like I I don't personally see if I had the choice to, between the two, I'd still probably play EFT just because I think the game loop is stronger and there's more longevity to it and you can play for longer. Like, I'm not really a dip in and out kind of person when I play anyway. So I, I think there's like a place for this for people, but it's yeah. probably not, not a place for me. Like, one cool thing, though, is that they've got like a bunch of quality of life stuff in here. Mm-hmm. And there's a couple of things that are in Tarkov that aren't in this as mm-hmm. well, in, in fairness. So it kind of goes both ways, but some of the stuff is actually really good. And you know, Tarkov could just like take those ideas and bring them back into EFT for sure. Some of them, mm. like I have like a whole bunch of like random stuff. So like rolling up bags and rigs, quite neat. So, like rather than just having to have them open in your bag. Can you still store slots, stuff in them? Like, no. So you like roll up like you a you know like a WT one uh, whatever it's called like one hundred nine plus one hundred six rig. Like that would be either as it is or like rolled up into a one by three. They can't store anything. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, that that's that a cool idea. So that's pretty cool. Um, there's a quick equip, which is basically what the, like, it actually solves the preset problem that we've had for ages. So like presets are like too cumbersome because they encompass like everything. Whereas the quick equip is really handy because what you do is you put on your armor, your like rig, helmet and, and bag um, and your gun. And then mm. when you open up the quick equip, um, quick equip window, it's like, how many mags do you it's basically like mags and ammo on one side and like consumables on the other so it's like how many mags do you want and what ammo do you want in them and then you can and you can buy them all as well in the same screen and it should but it shows you also in the list of ammo and mags like how many you have already in your stash of each type Mm. and then on the med side it's like what do you want to bring in do you want to bring in this med kit bandage blah blah blah. and again it shows you how many you've got of each type and anything you don't have it buys so that's like it's like the halfway house but that's actually better because normally you're like you're not always like, I'm going to use the same rig, the same armor, the same bag every single time, which is the issue with the preset system in Tarkov. And this is better because it's like, yeah, okay, you decide your like loadout and then all the consumables and all the other stuff, you can just bop, 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 do it on the quick buy. So that works really, really well. Um, you can heal multiple body parts from med kits so if you're damaged. You know, you get a black limb and then it spills across. You use your med kit and it goes and it fills out all of your like, mm. limbs slowly mm-hmm. until either the med kit's finished or you're fully healed, which is super cool. Um, you can like yeah, you can move whilst loading mags because you can like start loading a mag in the inventory and then leave the inventory and it'll just carry on. So you mm. can like walk slowly while you load, which is interesting. And there's like a really interesting keychain as part of your character. So it's like it's like an intrinsic like pocket kind of thing. And what happens is when you go into raid, if you find a key, that key has to go in your secure container. But when you leave the raid, you can put the key in the key tool. So, you, so the key tool is like you can only bring stuff in to raid oh. in a key tool. You can't put it in there in raid. <clears throat> but if you had it, if you managed to survive with it, it's a bit like the hardcore rule. Like if you survived oh, with it, I then see you get to put did. it in the key tool, which is like actually really cool. Like that's so they, actually really like neat. They gave free to play. Well, they gave everyone, but specifically free to play players. They have a like a very light version of the secure container. It's input only. Yeah, if you manage to survive. Yeah, so if you have a secure container, you can put it in the secure container. You'll always get it, and then you can put it so, in your key tool afterwards, if you, even if you die. Oh, right? and it's if you're only free to play, keys. And it's, I think so. It's, I don't know what yeah. else can go in there, but it's, it seems only keys, yeah. That makes sense. Interesting. So you have to leave with the raid if you don't have a secure container, right? You have to take yeah, it out in yeah. some fashion, so either in the container or whatever. So that's kind of interesting. Um. Then the like the shooting range mm-hmm. like is really is really cool. So you can build a, and like people were like walking me through this because it wasn't actually that obvious. You can build a gun in the shooting range using the weapon builder, and it like just drops it on the floor. I think it puts it in your hands if you have like a spare hand but, or spare slot. But uh, yeah, it just drops it on the floor. So you can like test a gun without buying the stuff. You, you didn't pay. You didn't pay for any of these things. You can just like put a gun together, like a fake gun nice. with the bits, and then test it in the shooting range. And then you can put <laughs> you can put different loadouts on the target dummies. So you can test out the TTK and actually do like armor testing or whatever in the shooting range itself. So you can like put the armor on them, level five, level six, whatever, shoot it with different bullets, see what it does, see what the TTK is like. That's actually really cool. It's actually really, really neat. Um, and even in the weapon builder thing itself. Like, I, I was like, I sat there, you know, like, the weapon builder has always looked good in Arena Breakout, honestly, like, even on mobile. And um, you, like, open it up, and you open up some of the parts, and there's, like, a load of, like, 
instructions at the top of one of the things or like there's a list of stuff and i was like what is this guys and i opened it up and it was just like sort by ergo sort by vertical recall sort by horizontal recall sort by name like within the parts list and i was like i was like guys just like i'm not saying this game is like better than Tarkov or anything but like right like just saying like this is actually super super awesome like we could have done with this a long time ago in eft we have to like like, we have like randomized parts like counter like botting or something weird right in eft which is like really annoying it's just like yeah sort what you like sort it however you want it is actually like even more important in Tarkov because there's more parts like in in this it's not actually that bad because there's only six or something for like each particular like window um and then even things like you know you go to the market and when you like selling stuff like the flea looks really weird like the marketplace is like totally different it's it's like um it's almost like working with an exchange rather than Hmm. like the flea market like you know a player driven like each line is a player like whatever it's like if you go into buy fuel or grenade cases or whatever like there's 20 lot five lines with the same price right whereas like when you're looking at the market on arena it's a list of like prices and then volumes at prices hmm. so there's like no player data like you don't see any people right. selling stuff. it's just like oh there's there's ten thousand of this round at like this price and, yeah. the, and the prices are like very quantized so it's like you know you can sell at like 86 88 90 92 you can't sell it for like 91.4 or whatever you can't go under by like two rubles like it's just doesn't really seem to be the case um which is kind of it's kind of interesting so you can kind of see like the market depth like way more easily like it it feels more like a financial exchange than it does Hmm. in tarkov which feels more like you know you could just see everybody's individual thing it's just not very useful but you can do stuff like you know when you go to buy things in the quick buy menus you just like it auto purchases the lowest offers and stuff which is just like so nice um so whatever it is you know you never get like well it's out of stock because it's like it's abstracted to the layer above if you see what i mean so when you when you put an order into the market like in tarkov like tarkov isn't really a yeah, so i see tarkov's, it here it's never, tarkov's never really been like an tarkov's never not an exchange right it's, an, it's always it's more like ebay so when you go to buy it and someone else has bought it you get the error right. message that you purchased, right whereas right. like in arena breakout it's like an exchange like because you send them an order to buy like a hundred rounds and the exchange will just buy the best hundred at the time and get uh, okay kind of, it's, i see it's like it's like a market order on a stock market it's like it's different you know it's like you never you didn't nice. get that in real life right oh i'm gonna buy you know 10 shares of apple or whatever oh sorry they've already been bought like that doesn't happen right you just you put a market order and it just gives you the, the best so when you're selling order, too you get to like list it you know you can list a little higher up in the tiers I think so something like that yeah i've, I've not but tried selling but um you obviously you'll just like, have to you, wait longer you'll be like entering you'll be like entering the order book i guess mm-hmm. like if you sell it higher or you can be like oh i want to be like at the top of the market kind of thing i want it to sell straight away yeah but like it seems i don't know I, i'm not sure I, don't, I haven't played with it enough to know fully but like from from a buyer's perspective it's like kind of nicer in some ways but it's like yeah. it's fundamentally very different so you know it's, it's kind of is what it is um yeah, I don't, like, biggest problems, which I've still got here, like, biggest problems is literally all, for me, it's, like, almost all controls. There's no top-up ammo stacks option, which is annoying. Um, so if you've got, like, 12 rounds, you can't just, like, top up to 60 in an ammo stack. So that's that doesn't exist in, in this game. You have to always thing. drag. So you have to, like, try and find it and drag it or, like, fill a mag and then empty it out, like, that kind of thing. Because that's silly. Like, you can fill a mag, that's okay, and empty it. But um, you can't then re really top up the 30 to 60. But uh, yeah, well, the rest of it is just, just like literally all controls. Like I wrote, wrote down here, like selecting your optic is the same as changing uh, magnification, for example. So like in EFT, you've got like change reticle. So like a MRS site, for example, you've got change reticle, which exists in this game. And then you've got like change zoom. So if you've got like an LCAN and then you've got, so if you've got, um, and then you've got a zoom scope with a, like an LPVO with a red dot on top, change site is like another button. Whereas in this game, like change site and change zoom is the same. So the LCAN for me, I, like I hate it in this game because it's like one times, four times, iron sight, one times. It's like really painful. That's like really, really annoying. Like I've ne- I never want to use the LCAN ever again. Because I was like, oh, we'll just use that because this is like nice staple. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was just like, oh God, I have to like cycle through the iron sight every time I want to try and go back to the, like one times. This is, this is like horrendous. <laughs> There's like some stuff that's just like not rebindable, like, you know, um, 
free look is just like not rebindable. I think it's, it's on mouse or something, or like a middle mouse, but I normally have mine on old. Um, it doesn't have double hotkeys like Tarkov, so you can't do shenanigans like right click to hold breath because there's no like press. You can do press release, but you can't do like two hotkeys for the same thing. So then you can't, you can't, like if you've got that on, you can't release it and stuff. So it's like, it's just like not as, not quite as flexible. But yeah, I mean, I think that's it really. But, but like most of it is like other than controls, I do think there's like a lot of extra quality of life stuff in the game. That, oh, yeah. You know, EFT could, could definitely like take some. Um, yeah, take some inspiration from in some ways. Like, there's stuff that they could do too. I mean, but... yeah, I mean, to, to be fair here, that it, it's, I think it's a lot easier for this studio to take BSG's essentially like design foundation and then build up off that. Whereas, like, BSG started from inspiration from like Stalker and, you yeah. know, whatever daisy some other games so because this one's a lot more one-to-one so like you know i'm sure they had a lot more room to and they're starting from a clean slate so to speak whereas like you know bsg maybe if they wanted to do uh the flea market thing or the gunsmith thing or whatever it may be you know kind of difficult or a lot of work because they didn't really think about that the first time around when they were starting from ground zero, you know? So these guys kind of have a certain luxury, which is kind of like the... Uh, I don't know. No, you're just, very right. Huh? You're very true. It's very, very true. It's very true. Yeah. Um, it's, so, like, yeah, to, to be fair, it's like, it's a new thing, and when you're copying something else... Um, then you can be like, oh, well, these are all the things they got wrong, so we'll just incorporate that into the groundwork of our design for our 1.0. Yeah. You know, it's easy. Speaking of which, <laughs> now that we've covered... Arena speaking Breaker, of copying. <laughs> and speaking of copying, uh, there's obviously been some more drama in general about you know, lots of stuff. So we already had the creator drama on launch in the first place about people being ghosted and stuff, yada yada. And then... When the game did launch, a lot of people were, I don't know, speculating about a few things, saying, you know, it does seem like some stuff is like very similar, like even some sounds seem very similar, and there's certain buildings that are very similar. There's a, a clip going around on, on Twitter, at least, where there is a building in Arena Breakout that is like is one of the iconic woods buildings, oh, which is the, I did you know, that. you go in and there's the kitchen on the left, and then there's this your room straight ahead of you with the little room to the left but then there's a staircase and then the staircase is like is in the middle and then there's two sides to the room above um that's like an iconic building a lot of people have said you know many of these buildings were part of like other asset packs or whatever from like back in the day there's apparently there's a building in daisy that's very similar as well like maybe maybe mm -hmm. there's another one that was like a different building it was like in daisy and then in tarkov and then also in arena breakout and it's like you know who's really copied who here like is it just is this like an open source kind of thing? Is, is it an open thing to buy like is you could just purchase this as a template or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Like things, things kind of rumbled on. And then basically the accusations, the proper accusations of like actual intellectual property theft have started to appear. And then Logical Solutions in the first place posted up, I think the first one that I saw about it, which he kind of, he kind of clickbaited it. Like let's, let's not beat around the bush. He, he pretty much like clickbaited this tweet. Because I think he started off just being like arena breakout stool stool toggle code to question mark code, question yeah. mark yeah and it's like question mark question mark oh it, it, that's it, that's not like a shock question mark question mark that's like oh it's I'm questioning question mark question mark is it is it it's like I don't know man like you know if you're gonna start off with like something like that then people are obviously gonna read into it being like you believe that this is the case because I think later on he like walks it back slightly and is like okay I didn't mean like game code because. Anyway, so like, what, what does he show here? He shows, what, what exactly is in this tweet? You remind me, and I can't read it because it's too small on here because I've got this uh, stupid Skype for Android. <laughs> Arena Breakout stealing Tarkov game code. I had to emphasize the all caps and question marks and asterisks there. BSG was right all along, dot, 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 question mark. A community manager reached out to me with stuff he found on a popular machine forum. People have already ripped the game apart and found copied code from Battlestate Games using actual Tarkov boss names in the Arena Breakout mobile and desktop games. 
it's not a good sign at all. This screenshot on the left is not from Tarkov. It is directly from the mobile game and desktop versions of Arena Breakout, which is like, oh, I don't know, a text file of a bunch of like floats, integer 32s, and there's some names next to them, which has got like one of them is like, uh, Killa underscore Y underscore Delta underscore two underscore B underscore enemy underscore boss. Just got some numbers afterwards. What do you this means? I don't heck know, but it, it is pretty weird to have like Killa in there. There was also another one where that one, is that one the header file? Is that like the dot h file? That one? Dot the logical has that. Mm. It should say like right at the top. No, it says struct f boss settings. Okay. Uh, uh, there's, no, there's, there's there's a couple I've seen floating around. I mean, there's this one that he quote tweeted from a, he says, <laughs> all right, wait, let we'll, me we'll go down chronologically. So then he follows up later. He says, too many people are wrapped up in the fact there's a different engine slash code base. That's not the point. The point is that Tarkov has unique variables for their boss settings. These unique variables were copied and pasted into an arena breakout for what can't tell you is extremely odd and a bad look. Um, then he follows up in our tweet, look, another credible person. A very credible person, a cod leaker, has just confirmed this as well, which they show some screenshots and there's kill uh um again some more like con constitute time, close attack, you know, a bunch of like parameters and definitions and stuff. Um that one there, I actually think I can't remember which one it is, but I think it's that one that you just showed. I think no sorry, this the one in the dark mode. I think this one go to the next pet picture in that little tweet, because it's yeah, so I think this one is like actually just the dumbest thing ever. Mm -hmm. Because kill AI. if you look at it's it's literally like kill AI. Yeah, well, like it's not killer. It's just because it says killer, right? But it's like it's kill it's kill AI. Like the other ones is different because the other one says like you know killer underscore detection range underscore whatever, right? And like Kajani, which is like Sturman and da da da. They've got like boss names in there. Whereas like kill AI just happens to have killer in it. It's not. Like, doesn't actually even read killer. It just says it just says kill AI. So that's like literally could be any old thing. Um, like that that one is just like stupid, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, so I I, I think what this is, if I had to guess, the left is killer because I saw that as well. But now that I'm looking at this in more detail, I think the left is um, arena breakout, and then the right is supposed to be from Tarkov if I'm assuming correctly. And I think he, because Kill AI and Killa, they contain the same characters, I think it pulls up. Um, I don't know. And and if from what I, I don't see, maybe not. Whatever. I'm not, I'm not going to speculate any, for, any further because I don't really know. <laughs> but it, it no, to say that, you know, there, there was one other one that had, I'm not going to be able to find it. Uh, what's it called? Gluhar in there. And it's like, why, you know, I can't think of like a good reason why you would name your internal bosses or whatever after Tarkov, unless you're just like that <laughs> creatively bankrupt, you know? I don't know. Um, I guess some more creatively is... bankrupt would just be copy pasting, but... <laughs> so far, we haven't seen any proof mm -hmm. of any of this except for what we've seen here which is like a list of variable names so there's mm. no like there's no code we haven't seen any like code calling any of these variables we haven't seen like their boss ai using any of the tarkov you know data or whatever the only like real explanation that i've heard so far outside of like oh they've copied it but we haven't seen any proof of that the only mm. real explanation that i've seen that sort of almost makes sense is that they're just taking the piss and that they've like added all this stuff in as like a publicity stunt because somebody would find it because it's easy to decompile and you know blow up on Twitter for no apparent reason. Right? There's that, that's, I was like, that's actually plausible. Like, I, I wouldn't put it past them based on the way that mm -hmm. they've acted. Like, they've, they've probably they've been very antagonistic towards the BSG, mm -hmm. rightly or wrongly. Um, they've been like, you know, out for blood and it has worked. They nearly had to pay out a load of creators, a load of money. And now they didn't have to because they got free yeah. marketing. So, you know, it, it worked. So I kind of like wouldn't. Be surprised if it's there just a bait almost and that they don't use any of these variables at all because there's a lot of people have said like yeah like okay there, there's a few there's a couple of different things here which 
logical says like this isn't about the fact you know a lot of people getting wrapped up in the fact that these two things there's different game engines for both of them and like i would say like yes yes and no like i'm not a big coding guy obviously but you know not enough people have talked about this like some of it some of it's coding and some of it's not coding i think this is the issue like there's certain some of the argument here is about coding and some of it is about like other things which are related to work and intellectual property but not necessarily like code per se <laughs> so as people have rightly pointed out arena breakout is um an unreal game which is c plus plus whereas tarkov is a unity game which is c sharp and you can't just copy and paste the code from one into the other and you like it would just take a, a, a stupid amount of effort to try right and to like try to bend one set of code base into the other like you basically have to like rewrite it so a reader breakout is probably written you know themselves and then the game looks different right like there was a, there was quite a few tongue-in-cheek posts going around one of them being like well if the reader breakout copied the code then how do you explain that the game runs so well which i thought was quite funny <laughs> yeah those uh, were funny <laughs> those were actually funny um but like and and so that's like that's like part of the argument but then i think there's the other half of the argument which is like more valid which is more about um more about like assets you know models and meshes it's not necessarily a like code so to speak but like meshes for guns meshes for whatever mm. um you know audio files you know sound files that kind of stuff which is like intellectual property that's not necessarily code but it's like pieces of sort of media that or things that bsg have had to work on which yeah. can be copied probably more you know, more easily actually like if you rip out the unity models i don't know how you transfer those into unreal but i'm sure it's not that hard like once you've got it in an editor of some kind you can probably take like a vertex mesh map and move it from one place to another i would i would guess because these things are not you know that'd be like moving something from photoshop into gimp as opposed to you know like the two game engines are like very different than something like i i'm completely unknowledgeable about this but i'm just guessing based on knowledge of just like other stuff so maybe i'm wrong but um i would imagine converting like a vertex map also, to one model is, is relatively easy to move from one game engine to another blender being open source means that people can develop their own add-ons and tools and variants of blender to support these types of behaviors as well stuff like yeah. this so i'd be surprised if that wasn't possible yeah um, obviously audio files is like that's a straight like you could if you can rip those it's just straight rip right there's nothing yeah. nothing to stop you doing that like technically speaking um so that's like you know there's a there's a bit more to this from makita's side i guess like i don't know where, what have you got next lined up in like chronology? um well i was just i was actually trying to find that one video where they were showing the two buildings um side by side because it is pretty like you know it does look one to one um just like a Thing few like, a few clutter uh, stuff rotated around like put a bed here it's a different bed ad set uh move the lampshade and perfect <laughs> the funny thing about that is like that's like a different argument about like whether something's distasteful or whether it's like illegal mm -hmm. about yeah. you know if you build a game and i see the game and i play the game and then i copy the game basically like one for one but i don't take any assets like i rebuild everything like is that is that plagiarized? Like, you know, you you rebuilt um, it all from scratch. Like, it's sort I mean, of like, you, I don't know. I'm I'm really sure like where that falls. I don't think you can like <laughs> steal an idea. I would say it's probably like distasteful. You know, it's like why would you want? I don't know something that. Why would you want to do that? <laughs> yeah, it's like it doesn't really make like who wants to see a really you know those like B movies that are just like. They're not even B, they're like C movies. They're like takes an IP like the Terminator, but this is like the Cyborginator, and it's like super like jank. Like, you know, it looks awful. Yeah. They're using like really low quality props and like special effects, but like and it's the same like rough plot. It's like nobody likes those. So like I don't know, why why would you do that? But like if you could like I don't know, this I f it, to to compare it directly with Arena Breakout and Dark I feel like that's a little bit different because it's like they're taking the arena breakouts, taking the foundation and sort of like modifying it, like essentially taking the game and then retrofitting this monetization side of it. Because like that's that's the thing with like Targov is like such a unique game in that you get this very hardcore experience 
that you would get in like Daisy or these other open big survival games, but it's like packaged in this unique way, right? And it's very like you can return to it, etc. It's got economy. There's a, there's a lot of different aspects to it. And I, you know, the, the, I'm kind of getting sidetracked here, but anyways, point point being is, I don't know. I lost a lot, lot long time ago. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult, right? Because like I made the argument on Twitter that you know that it's kind of between BSG and Arena Breakout. Like yeah. as consumers, it's like difficult because it's like, what are we are we now having to you know be judge and jury deciding on like who's broken what IP, like what line do we stand on, like where at what point do we find it distasteful enough to like not play like it's it's tricky right like most people just won't simply won't care yeah um, most people won't just play, care. they just want to play games that are fun right and not have to worry yeah. about like who's going to end up in court with whoever blah blah i mean in all honesty though this is a completely mute moot discussion at the end of the day because like good luck you know russia slash uk i mean i don't know even like i'm sure that the ip isn't owned in the uk uh, that's probably half the reason how they can move their stuff around in the first place. But I mean, I don't know how BSG's stuff works. It's probably very complicated now with the geopolitical climate. But like, good luck going at least from you know a Russian company to a Chinese company about like intellectual property theft. Like, <laughs> like it's laughable. Like, it's just, there's just no chance, right? So I, yeah. it's probably a moot point anyway. As a, I think there is a sweet FA that BSG could do about this. In all honesty, even if it's illegal in like wherever. I just don't think that I just don't think it's realistic. Yeah, I don't think it's even realistic. They probably wouldn't open that can of worms. But so, like, I've tried to like you know because I was thinking about this and being like, ah, oh, you know, as consumers, like most people aren't going to care. Like, do we even care about this? Like, does it even matter? Like, even if they stole and stuff, and like, you know, there's a bunch of people taking the moral high ground. Like, I get it, I understand. Like, mm-hmm. you know, if if it was me, like, it would suck. It'd be annoying. Um, and I'd be like, you know, I don't want people like ripping off my stuff, of course. So I've kind of like changed tact a little bit and been like, okay. Um, like BSG should basically not. Like, what should what should BSG do here? Like, do, do they should they care about this? Like, I I know it's annoying and they have to like keep an eye on it, obviously in some sense. But I think their time is honestly better spent working on the game, making yeah, the game better. absolutely. If you make the game, it's like you know, it's almost a bit like the Gabe Newell like Steam versus piracy thing. It's like mm, yeah, you know, you make, you make the experience so good that people don't want to do the the pirate thing, right? And it's like, oh, you make your experience so good that people don't want to play. They like rip off clones. Like you 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 make the game and the experience amazing such that people don't want to go to these other ones because they can't replicate the experience in the same way right it's like harder to replicate the experience than it is to you know make an m4 with a drum mag right? it's just mm. you know you could make as many m4s with drum mags as you like but yeah. unless you've got like the, the talk of experience it's not going to be the same thing so like yeah if arena breakout managed to crack the code of what makes dark of great and fine but like i mean i personally don't think they will because of the the i don't know the short-term sacrifices they've made for mm. the game to attract people in um like if they made it like talk people would be like oh there's all the old things we don't like about eft blah blah but it's the reason why people keep playing it's the reason why you can put in however many hundred of hours per per wipe and keep going Um, so i don't know so i I think they should just focus on on themselves and focus on their stuff and focus on what they can do to make the community like them again because they're Mm -hmm. in a bit of a tough spot obviously but Many of us will still want to enjoy the game and like the game and want BSG to right the wrongs, and they can only do that through actions. And mm. uh, I said exactly as much because I actually felt like I was, I was about now, maybe I was slightly unfair in the tweet that I, I posted, being just like, why do we care if they stole their IP? I was like, I was quite harsh. Um, but you know, Nikita was like responding to actual people on Twitter, like quite a few people. Um, yeah. maybe we'll go through a few of them in a minute, but um, I was like, okay, look, if he's actively looking at stuff, then I will say. I will say exactly that to the big man himself. Like, stop focusing on a really breakout. Focus on your own game because of shit what they're going to do, right? Mm-hmm. They're going to do what they're going to do. And there's not much you can do about it. So you just yeah. got to focus on yourself. Like, it's a bit like, you know, and I actually even said in the tweet, it's a bit like you know, on YouTube, you know, if people are copying you, you're probably doing something right. So mm-hmm. just, just make sure you're doing the best that you can and like, don't worry about other people so much. You know, it's like this usually unhealthy to do that, right? <laughs> you're trying to like compare yourself to you and do the best that you can and then be happy with that. Like obviously look at what other people are doing as inspiration, but you know, it's like it's almost like, you know, spending all your time and energy like commenting on the haters on, on underneath your videos, you know, like ignoring yeah. the, uh, people who are like <laughs> saying nice stuff. Like I've I always try to like only comment on the stuff that, where people are like positive and go like people could be constructive, right? And they can criticize. 
it, it could be constructive. I've you know the the guy writes on there about you know beta male blah blah whatever. <laughs> like, I, there's no point in responding to this person. Mm-hmm. It's just waste, it's yeah. like a waste of time. So like, they're not adding anything to the community. They're not adding any valuable feedback for me to take away and make a better video. Like none of this stuff. And it's like read a breakout just like digging into BST and like being yeah. a pain in the ass. It's like. Are yeah, they that's making true. it better? No. Are they making like are they making you do better work? Well, maybe, but you're gonna take valuable stuff from the things they've done that people like and incorporate that back into your own game and think more about your own game, right? So use them for inspiration, but don't like don't let them needle you. Don't let them get like get, get yeah. in under your like don't let them live rent free in your brain. Yeah. You know, that's like the important part, I think. So we'll see. We'll see. Nikita like, seems very, you know, he's doing stuff on, on Twitter. But anyway, we'll we'll we can go through his actual tweets. <laughs> Oh boy! Yeah, I mean, he was—he was yapping. He was on one. He was on a, a vodka-fueled evening. What? Uh, what? What tweets do you have in mind? The the most recent ones, or? Well, there's the yeah, the most recent ones because well, not like not like super super recent, but the well, I say not super recent. It was like two days ago. So there was like there was a whole string of tweets that came through. Oh God, um, the long live hardcore. Two days ago. Yeah. So this was and this was like just like why it was like it's been a rough couple of weeks we want us to keep it quiet but it's up to you to decide if you would like to support this kind of things and stick to the games that not only not only enter the genre but do not hesitate to copy what has been done so presumably he's talking about arena breakout and people's decision to play it which is like people are going to play it like you kind of just have to let that happen people, and they said people from the community have noticed what's wrong with screenshots roaming around the talk of community and he posted some of his own screenshots of supposedly abi you know I guess is it like more asset stuff? Is it sorry more? Uh, um, it just looks yeah, more it's like it's more integer like. Um, mm. it's, yeah, it's more sorry. It's more what do you call it? More like variables. More variables, not code. Again, it's more just more variables. Um, so if people have noticed what's wrong with the screenshots roaming around the Tarkov community. In the meantime, we will continue to work on the game with even greater effort. There's still a lot to be done before release, and more promises to be kept. Fair enough. Some people have accused me of being short-sighted and even stupid based on recent events, but those who know me have always been confident in my integrity, hard work, and care for everyone. Believe me, we are focusing no matter what. These were difficult times, but my confidence in the future is stronger than ever. Um, There's another bit where he said, like, there's also new information that's not been heard before. The name Kajani is the name of a man who became the prototype of Sherman from whom the art of the boss is drawn. And that's, like, mentioned in these, like, arena breakout variables or whatever. Yeah. But... uh, but yeah, after the, after the, it's been a rough couple of weeks. Like, so he posted all this other stuff, and then he like posted a separate tweet under the main tweet, and it just said, "We are the unheard. Reveal the future together. Long live hardcore." And I, I think everybody just like had a collective groan of just like, "Oh God, like, why would you say that? Like, don't you, don't talk about unheard ever again. Like, what, what are you doing? Don't say this. Don't don't say that. Just don't say that. It's so weird." And then he posted like. Gila running in ASCII art or whatever. No, sorry, not ASCII art. It's in like pixel art. Um, which is very weird. So yeah, he was uh, he was chatting. He was re- he was really he saying was. some stuff. He really was. Yeah, I saw. He also did a uh, um, like shoot your ideas here or something. Is he quote tweeted Valiant? I guess because Valiant like added him and told him yes. some stuff. So that was like really recently. So yeah, he posted something with like a dude. It looks like a new trader, maybe. It was like a bald guy. Yeah. And maybe it's a new trader, maybe it's a boss. It's hard to know. Mm-hmm. I thought I thought it kind of looked a bit like um what's that new boss on the streets? The the police guy. Uh what's his yeah, name? Colantai? Colantai. It looks a bit, bit like Colantai, like off duty sort of. I don't know. A bit. But maybe it's maybe it's not him. It's Colantai a bit fatter than that. I am I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um I could see it though. There's another there was another random post he made, which is basically saying like 33% of EAD players now have PDE, which is what it is. Um, and yeah, the latest one that you're talking about. So Vel said like, here's some things I like to be changed. And Nikita just said, shoot your ideas here. But like, if you go onto his like replies, he's, he's replied to like a ton of different people. Um, like, you know, people like Namana, the oi guy, who's saying like, I know a lot of people have mm-hmm. a hard time believing you. Let's see what you've got. Let the action speak for themselves. And he said, you are right. Um, we had like a big conversation with Big Fry because Big Fry was basically like, boss names are copied. It's definitely weird, but there's two different engines. Like, I'm gonna need more than this to be convinced that they've like stolen your stuff. And uh, he, Nikita said, of course we were investigating. 
And Big Fire said, like, so you're investigating. We're also throwing out some pretty serious accusations before the investigation is concluded. Like, Nikita, I'm all for finding out the truth, but you should really chill on this discussion until you know 100% for certain they stole your code or assets or props, which is very fair. Um, to which Nikita said, like, we're pretty positive on some cases already. For example, some of the gun sounds 100% stolen, AK-74 sounds. Some of the weapon mods we saw stolen too, AK models too, exact level layouts, some of the buildings, we are making a list. And he said, look, I'm sure this video is what you're referring to, which is the one we were talking about, about the two buildings looking identical. Uh, he said again, there it is. Copying, uh, there it is, yeah. So again, copying is frowned upon. But this is clearly two different models with their own sets of textures that were most likely built as a make this to look like this situation. I want yeah. to see where the assets were lifted from Tarkov. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It was just, I guess there's, there's a lot of conversations. Um, there's, there's a lot of conversations about this stuff. Like, what else was there? There was, um, like, takes basically saying seeing Nikita upset over competition. Um, regardless of copying or not, shouldn't this just make you uh, motivate you to make your product better? Um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And Nikita said, we are working. It's okay. So it's like, yeah, it's nice. It's just, you know, a bunch of people, um, a bunch of people talking about stuff and him actually replying to people. It's like, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's very interesting. I, I didn't actually read Valiant's one yet because this only was like three hours ago or something. He's basically mm -hmm. said new items in the game like Lennox or graphics cards, you know, freaking out about like cool items, loot increased on all the maps and events weekly once we hit five, five to four to five months into life. I do think they're late on the events, but it's probably because all this stuff blew up. <laughs> but even like three months in, four months in, they probably should have been doing events. That's probably true. I, I mean, I don't know. I think that some of those things are important, but you should really focus on the Pestley interview. That's what I said in my post. I really think the kids should focus on the Pestley interview. Like, there's, that's like the biggest issues with the community. I didn't really disagree with any of that stuff. Like, it was a very good take on what people actually care for. Um, what they care to see, like, changed in the game. But, I don't know. It's good to see... It's good to see him come back to the community like that. Like, kind of just take the... Take the feedback and not be too, I don't know, I don't know offended about it or whatever. He seemed pretty angry when he was on, you know, with Twitch chat the other day. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. Like, looking a bit more receptive is fine, but just, God, like, don't say the words unheard. Like, God, please stop saying about unheard. Mm -hmm. Like, no one wants to hear, but every, everyone is fed up of unheard. No one wants to hear about unheard ever again. You know, let the people have their blue name. No one else even wants to, everyone else wants to pretend that this never happened. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know, man. It's, <sighs> I probably, like, I don't know. Maybe I'll look at it just as like a, a joke. I mean, I feel like I'm kind of over the whole, I don't know. The whole like Tarkov formula is like getting really slow because there's like just like a serious lack of innovation. This is like, it's like they took the you know, Arena Breakout, Lost Light, and whatever. It's like, yeah, I don't know. It's just like the grossest form of it. And like Lost Light was like kind of cool because it, it did like a few things. Like they did like a few things differently on top of like constantly selling you stuff. <laughs> but, you know, it's more like a fascination with like, look at this weird, obscure mobile Tarkov thing. Isn't this weird? And it's like, oh, now I, now I understand why. Because it's like, you know, tons of quality quality of life features i mean like one of the things you were talking about like healing one limb at a time it's like versus healing the entire body it's like yeah i mean you, you could kind of like split that two different ways it's like quality of life or like this is designed intentionally this way for a specific purpose you know it's like back to the cms surgery thing argument you know it's like yeah you, you, the there, was in my, <laughs> there was a discussion in my discord about this exact topic and some people were just like because it's not even just um, like heal everything in with one button or whatever. It's like you can, except for maybe like the surgery kit to fix a back limb. Like mm -hmm. you can, you basically just press one button. There's like a quick like med hockey. And it does just, it heal like, them all? Does. Is it intuitive? Like it heals the lowest one first? Like how, you know? Uh, I can't, I'm not sure exactly. It's okay. Um, some, it almost seemed like it was doing like multiple bits at once even because of the way mm -hmm. that it functions maybe. Anyway, so you press the button and it's like, It'll like fix the like even if you're not got stuff hotkeyed, right? It's like there's a quick, quick med button, and I don't know whether it's just pockets, rigs, and stuff. Like I, I'm not sure. I didn't I didn't play with it enough to see. Yeah. But you press the button and it just fixes you. 
you know like yeah you eventually you have to surgery kit to fix black men but everything else like breaks or bleeds or heal or whatever you just like you just press the quick med button and it fixes everything and in my discord some people were like really not liking that being like oh, it makes the game look just too easy you know you don't have to think about like binds or binding stuff or like you know figure out things and like i'm like very 50 50 on this stuff these days because like i'm usually on that side of the argument but I think it depends on what kind of player you are too, and like how yeah. you want your game to be. It's like it's it's oh, almost yeah, like sure. there's no right or wrong answer, right? Yeah, like hardcore yeah. sort of means that in some ways, but in my opinion, it comes very much back towards like the age old question from like StarCraft, which is, you know, what's the biggest one of the biggest differences between StarCraft One and StarCraft Two? Well, StarCraft One, every time a worker comes out of the the HQ, you have to send it to mine manually. There's no waypoint. StarCraft 2, it's like every other modern RTS. You you, know, you waypoint the minerals, and then when they get built, they go off there. Well, okay, but like that's fine, and that obviously makes sense as a yeah. thing. But but in StarCraft 1, right, to manage like three bases, you need like mm-hmm. 500 APM. Like it's insane. <laughs> so it's like, do you lose something with this this quality of life? It's like my skill cap argument. You know, it's like it's it's a difficult one, right? Because it's like there's a there's a skill cap argument. But I would say also there's like a choice. I th- I think the choice for me is the stronger pool. Um, it's like, and I'm not sure what the current iteration is, but let's assume it's you press one button and it does the thing. And you don't have to worry about it. You know, there really is no choice. I mean, like, I guess, I guess there's less choice. I'll say, oh, we're fine. There's less choice. Whereas like in Tarkov, it's like, okay, I'm going to heal. It's like, what am I going to heal first? You know, I got to prioritize what part Oh, head thorax, whatever. Which is, I think you can still like, I think you can still hotkey this stuff. I think like yourself, mm-hmm. but there's just like if you're casual, you just press like the quick med. But, okay, there might be some advantage because like Lost Light had a similar system where you could you could quick kill effectively, and you could set parameters for it. Like I can't even remember details, but you know it was like twenty percent then heal this but it would it would heal and it would heal the lowest part and then it would start healing and everything so you do like this really long if you're like really messed up you do this really long animation um or you could like go into the menu and like manually heal something or whatever there was different parameters i really didn't mess up with that much because anyways um so like under that it's like yeah it's just like a i don't know sorry <laughs> i lost i lost where i was going with that what were you saying <laughs> no no it's just like it's just interesting right it's like whether it's more casual friendly or hardcore and like mm. even some of these things that are kind of stupid it's like well do you really want players like messing about like this is games about like immersion right like is, is it is it more immersive to like customize your hotkeys so that it does exactly what you want or is it more immersive that like, your guy knows what to fi- fix and it abstracts that to like a button you press it and then your guy already knows what to fix because it's his body it's like i think it kind of depends on what player you are as to which one's more immersive like to, to really hardcore players it's like it's not immersive that I feel like I'm now not in control of like what's getting healed. Um, but this is the easiest and best way to do it most of the time. Versus somebody who's like more casual, more on the casual end of the spectrum, who's just like, I don't want to be messing around with like keyboard buttons. Like this isn't yeah, what I want in a yeah. military shooter. Like I want my guy to heal and I'm being taken out of the game to have to like think about like press, double press, you know, finding two keys to the same button, all this rubbish, right? I have to go and watch a bunch of YouTube videos for figuring out like mm-hmm. what's the min max hotkeys. Like it kind of depends what kind of player you are, I think, because um, I I find the extra controls immersive personally because it's then it's then like your key set, but it does mean that you then yeah you know, there's like secret text and stuff about how to like set stuff up. Yeah, it depends what kind of player you are, and also it depends what you are designing. You as a designer are trying to design That's for true. like experience, like uh, you know, Call of Duty is a much more like cinematic you know, pre-written experience for, like, single-player campaign, right? Like, it's all, like, planned out, scripted, etc., whereas, I don't know, uh, playing with a similar shooter that's, like, different. I guess I can't without tying in an RPG, but my point is, is, like, you know, there's, there's different things you could go for. I just feel like what they're going for is here's, here's like, a very streamlined version of Tark, like, very stripped down. It's, like, it, like they get like the like the very core of it, which is like extraction, <laughs> but they like simplify and like you know do everything, make it very friendly, and also we're gonna sell you a bunch of different stuff. <laughs> you know, like 
like we parse out each individual, you know, boosters. And, uh, yeah. If it's if it's anything like last night, like it's gonna be up the wazoo with microtransactions and like last it was. You could buy containers. They were like thirty days. You could just they had packs, money, uh, special accounts that came with like special features. Like, God, it's I mean that was like pay to win plus. It's actually kind of crazy because it's like it is the most pay to win first person you ever played. I think because you get to like. There's like depth in the pay to win. Like normally it's like you buy the you know the stuff that's like exclusive. Whereas this is like you could just anyways, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. There's the depths of hell. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. That's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't know how much more I'm going to be playing it. It's like, it's so similar to Tarkov. I feel like it scratches that same yeah. itch. Like, it's kind of novel, but yeah. I don't think it's going to, you know, when Tarkov wipes, like, everyone's going to go play Tarkov. And it's just, I think it's just a better game because of all the stuff. But, like, it depends on what kind of player you are. I do think a really yeah. breakout could, like, hit a niche of PvP. I think, like, especially in the higher levels, I think it could be kind of cool. There's, like, maps like armory and tv station that i've not played but apparently like very pvp centric because they're like the high level maps and i think you have to have a certain amount of gear to go in like, there's a gear score almost that you need to like meet before you can enter those maps and then you have to pay as well it's a bit like labs but with like a gear score kind of thing hmm. um so like that could be kind of fun for people to do if it's like pvp chats but if you're more of like a survival focused person then like tarkov's already kind of at the far end of that and i think it really break out like drops off the <laughs> the precipice of like i'm probably not going to go there so, and if i'm Go to, then I'm probably just going to play EFT, which is more where I'm standing, right? Like, I see myself hopping back and forth between Tarkov and Grey Zone because Grey Zone is like a different game. Um, whereas, and but obviously needs a lot of work. Whereas, like, Tarkov is its own thing, and Arena Breakout kind of just like it fills a very similar hole. So, you're going to play one or the other, I think. But I don't know, we'll see. Like, if they can make it its own thing, then like, maybe it's a worthy addition as well. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. You like it, you like it, play it. Just just no I don't know. I, I, I don't want to say pull it for wallet because I don't know how much I believe in that because what is my twenty dollars in the grand scheme of things, but maybe that's a bad way of looking at it. I'm not sure, but anyways. I just don't like checking out for free at least. <laughs> yes. That that's that's the thing. Like and if you like it, there's nothing wrong with liking it, I guess, unless you believe the speculation. I, I would, I, if I need to speak to someone technical, because I feel like those screenshots, some of those look like they were like, uh, like, uh, memory log, I mean, not memory logs, but like, you know, data entries that were like, I don't know. I'd have to speak to someone technical, see if they could, uh, inform will, me. The last point I would say about it, I do enjoy the irony of Nikita posting like hex editor, like, yes, cutouts of like another game. Mm -hmm. you know probably is against tos <laughs> data, data mining that, that's funny that is actually AB, a yeah point. data mining abr right. I, do, I do find that quite entertaining yeah um obviously that ship has sailed with sbt now these days uh -huh. given that clean's been playing on stream and yeah because both gates have opened with sbt like nikita doesn't seem to care anymore it's which just kind of wild yeah which is kind of wild like it's a huge change huge I saw change willers posted a youtube video of sbt gameplay i was like what <laughs> Yeah, it's madness. So, kind of, yeah, whatever now, yeah. I guess. Uh, yeah. Speaking of Grey Zone. <laughs> Speaking of Grey Zone. Segue. Um, yep, yeah, so there was a patch for Grey Zone. Or, no, sorry. Well, well, yes, but not what I was going to say. What I was going to say was uh, NVIDIA, I believe, put out some new drivers um, and updates. And people have been reporting. Pretty good increases on 20 series and up cards, like 15 to 20 frames varying in between. Um, so yeah, check it, check check your drivers. I don't know about AMD, but I'm fairly sure about NVIDIA. Um, AMD's kind of like a usual bit slower on that type of stuff. And hopefully they'll get a performance patch here in the works. Soon. I mean, I've obviously not been able to test it out yet. Mm -hmm. So, 
like <laughs> I'm gonna keep having a look around, but I'm like probably just gonna have a new GPU land on my doorstep by the time I get home. Kind of decided that I'm gonna do that because um, it helps anyway. Like I, I I need another as I was saying before, I'm doing this like dual stream thing, so I, I need like a way to do the second thing, and I can either like rebuild a PC with a different CPU and blah blah, or I could upgrade my graphics card and put my 3070 in the other computer and just use MBank. That's like ten times easier. So I'm probably gonna use that. Um, I'm probably gonna do that, but then it means that I'm gonna buy a 40 series, which would be cool. Should probably do that now. You know, it'll last a bit longer. I want one with a bit more VRAM. That'll probably help nice. on UE5 which one, as well. Which one I've been scouring. I've been, I've been scouring, and it looks like the Min Max's choice, to me at least, looks like the 4070, not the 4070 itself, not the 4070 Ti, but the 4070 Ti Super. Just some mm. like really oh, yeah, I think pure I did see thing that. they brought out extra. Yeah, it's like I hate the Nvidia naming. Outside, like I like the series naming, but I, I hate the Ti superness of yeah, all these things. And this is a Ti super. and a Super, which is just like why? Yeah. So it's like not quite as good as a forty eighty, but um, it does have sixteen gig of VRAM. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's basically like the the lowest card that you can get with sixteen gig of VRAM. I mean, it, you know, it's no slouch, right? It's like a definitely an upgrade off what I have already. Mm. But um, you know, you get the 40 series stuff on it. And the problem with the 3080s, they're like they're literally over a thousand pounds. Like I know I know technology is like a bit cheaper in the States, but like, you know, it's like over a grand for me to get like so yeah, the 4080 and up is like, I mean equivalent right now is basically like 1250 US. So it's like a you know for a for a 4080 or above. I think a 4080 super is like I think they're like one, one ten here, so they'll be like one third, one yeah, like thirteen fifty US dollars, or whatever. Whereas like a, grand. a, a forty, a forty seventy Ti Super is eight hundred pounds, which is more like yeah, a grand on its own, without the extra. So I mean, it's, it's basically a good two hundred pounds cheaper. I mean, it's like twenty percent cheaper than moving up to the next one, which I think seems worth it. I mean, I know people are saying like the fifty XXs are coming out soon. But yeah. there's always something coming out soon. So right. like these things hold their value too. And I need to do something to be able to get the second stream PC working. So it's you know in a, in a good way. So I can move everything off YouTube as well. And um, this seems like a good way of doing it because I already have a GPU and I can move it over there. And it also means I've got some redundancy as well. Like if something happens to my GPU, then I've got a second one. And you know like it's, it's kind of one advantage about having a stream PC. So you kind of have like a computer that can like run games if you need to or at least like some parts of death bed um so i'm, I'm probably going to do that so we'll see that probably will help with gray zone for sure yeah another 40 series users have got a lot of extra grunt in there and you get access to dlss3 with the frame gen and with reflex i think the latency is nowhere near as high mm-hmm. um, and i've seen a bunch of people combi- combining those with like still with the 5800 x3ds and it's it's decent because yeah. that chip's still actually really good as cpu so don't feel like you necessarily have to go to like the 7800 x3d and like then get ddr5 and then get a new motherboard and and a new you know graphics card because then i'm going to end up dropping like three grand all in one one go which is a bit nasty so but yeah i mean I, i'm going to get back and test these new nvidia drivers and see in well in a week uh, i'm not back until like next Saturday, friday or saturday so in a week's time we will see and uh we'll check it out then i mean they might even put out a performance patch for then who knows mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited because it's it's a bit painful. Right? If if I get 15 FPS, that's going to take me from like 45 on stream with OBS open to 60, which is actually huge. Yeah. Like um, one of the most annoying things about the setup that I have is that yes, it's easy, but if you're not running a capture card, you have to still run an instance of OBS mm-hmm. on your gaming PC. And like on, in Gray Zone, it literally takes 10 FPS off. Mm-hmm. Just opening it. I don't not not even pressing record, stream, nothing. Just like opening it and having it running it's like man like the game's like so sensitive to other stuff like clem was talking to me about this actually he was like yeah the game's like really fussy like single single pc stream is like really hard on gray zone especially like you go in the helicopter and it's like um i didn't really actually this is like a rat like random tangent but like i had a really weird error right so i did this like dual stream thing for the first time and i was blaming it on this i was getting in the helicopter and it was literally going to like two fps like it was unwatchable it was unplayable, like and it was on my actual computer it wasn't on the stream mm-hmm. and people were like man this is crazy like whatever you did you've like really screwed it up and i was like this is this is insane and somebody was like oh, i had a friend who was like 
having some issues and he just like verified game files but i don't think that's the problem here anyway so i closed the game verified game files opened it back up everything worked perfectly i was like what like how is it even possible like then what how is it like, that's just so weird so if you are having like massive issues with gray zone like try verifying your game files because uh, i did that and it fixed everything and i was like i was blaming the like this teleport setup the second pc whatever and like <laughs> when i came back it all worked perfectly and like it was great i was like that's so annoying why didn't it just do that anyway like why do i have to go and do that like god i'm having to do that with um with hell divers as well like hell divers is really oh, really that too yeah, you know, sometimes you have to like verify game files. And it's like, oh, random things missing. It's just like, how? I didn't know. Come on, like, shouldn't the auto update to catch that? I don't know. A bit, bit annoying. Um, annoying. just wanted to quickly shout out. Speaking of Clementine, Clementine, uh, who is does a lot of like performance related stuff as far as like graphics and settings for like Tarkov and Grey Zone, possibly Arena Breakout in the future, and um, yeah. I watched. I actually got a chance to watch his video because I didn't get a chance to watch it about the gray zone, and um, yeah, it's very like he's very informative and definitely you can get like a good understanding of what settings do and also what to do to help improve your FPS. The the one thing I did um talk to him about, I never he never did get back to me, and I'd be curious. I might have to hit him up for this and see. It's because I remember seeing Junker complain about this. Which is that the game, there is, uh, to my knowledge, there is no way to run the game natively. There's always an upscale and some type of upscale are running, right? I say, yeah, upscaling. Because it's like, whether it's DLSS, FSR, TSR, or is it TAA? I can't remember, but one of, one of the two. I think there's TSR, yeah. Yeah. Because TA is just temporal errors. I guess it's just a catch-all. Yeah. Um, TSR is Unreal 5's in-engine, like, built-in uh, upscaling solution. We talked about last time, last week. Oh, did we? Yeah. Someone oh. in chat told me that that was... Oh, so I thought you meant you and I. I was like, huh? I don't remember that oh, conversation. No. <laughs> no. It, was, it, was, no it, was, it was last week on the, on the cast. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Because somebody in chat said, because I said, I don't know what this is, and someone in chat was like, oh, it's Unreal's one. Yeah. Um, so I think there's like, I think in the video, I think he might actually show how it's possible. So there was something, I don't know whether it was in this one or in a different video or his one or someone else's one. I can't remember now. But if you go into the settings and you pick an upscaler and then you go further up the settings menu, there's a slider bar, which is only active if you're on TSR. Uh, which you put it 100%. shows you the yeah and you can put that to 100 percent, and then that's as if it's like not being upscaled so on the other ones you can see like the 66 percent, 50 percent, 80 percent, whatever if you do like dlss quality performance balance same with um fsr and so you can see even though it's grayed out it does actually show you what the res downscale is which is kind of cool so i think yeah if you put it on yeah, so I think you can then like that to a hundred, and then it like not got a, um, not got a a, a scaler on it, which is kind of interesting because I didn't know that until I looked at the video. Like it's cool to then it then shows you because you know it's it's hidden behind the settings. Like unless you know what the SS quality does, like I I couldn't have told you offhand like what the downscale you know number was, but um it does actually show you in the game, which is quite cool. And yeah, and there's a slider on the Unreal one, which is pretty neat. So you can turn it off if you really want to and see the raw performance, the <laughs> real performance of the game. Kind well, of scary. One of the rabbit holes I fell into, like, you know, obviously doing this is not, like, shouldn't help your performance, but Cliff and I was talking about ghosting and then, like, the shadows and, like, how they're, like, fuzzy. And um, I guess the rabbit hole I found down, I, I figured out that apparently this is, like, an issue with the, I think it's the Unreal uh, Lumen and any type of upscaler, if I'm not mistaken, is that the lighting and shadows gets like very noisy. I, I say lighting, it's really mm -hmm. shadows, but because it's using lumens, what, how, I don't know if it's like rays or whatever it does to cast. Because I like genuinely looking at some of this footage, like 
uh, I didn't really get the chance to like fully experience this because like 45 FPS, you know, it's just like, you know, but like looking at it standing still, some of the stuff looks really good. Um, like the lighting and shadows, like it's just if I can like skip to I it. Think there's like a bit in particular where he shows like a, there's a cup on the there table, whatever. Like, yeah, I was amazed at the like the how good it was. Yeah, yeah, like the actual shadows got that noisy thing, but like the actual simulation of light and shadows looks amazing like this this there's a cup here and there's like a lamp in the center and there's a, cu a mug there and that's you know not like a fixed shed like a fixed shadow but it's like actually elongated and like stretched out relative to the source of the shadow and also like the shadow becomes like more faded i guess and more like it's just like it's actually really impressive but the noise stuff is like really annoying, and maybe maybe with the TSR trick that could work. Cause yeah, I don't know. Something interesting. With, uh, Bro, I, don't I don't know how it works. How what works? How I, I like this works. Like it looks ray traced. I don't know whether it is ray traced, but it looks ray traced. I don't know. It, it, that would be an interesting thing to to look into, honestly. Cause yeah, I'm, I'm I imagine the guy to be doing some type of like vector i i don't i don't even know like i i would have to look it up watch a video yeah uh, maybe it's some kind Foundry. of like you know because it does actually talk about ray tracing a bit in the settings if you like scroll over them it does say some stuff about it at the bottom so i don't know whether there's some kind of like you know you don't necessarily have to cast every ray you could do like you know edge detection mm. or whatever and like you know um you know, some kind of like smart edge detection where you go around and it's like, okay, once it finds an edge, it can go, okay, well, you know, go around here and then, because then you like cut out a lot of the calculations that you have to do. You'd have to like cast away in every direction. Like it's yeah, not yeah. necessary to brute course all things. So I, I don't know how it works exactly, but uh, I'm sure there's like a ton of optimizations in there, things like that that yeah. make these things work. So like maybe it is, yeah, it's like ray traced in some way and then with some like AI feature, which helps it figure stuff out, but makes it a bit fuzzy, but because you're only looking at it at a glance and it's a shadow as long as it looks broadly okay then like yeah unless you've got your face pressed up to the desk and you're going like oh look at the fuzziness from this like most of the time you're in the game world like, you just don't see it so maybe something like that kind of yeah i mean the, it's one of those things where it makes things look extra fuzzy or noisy it's it's and it's especially worse that you go down the scaling um and it's yeah. not necessarily I mean, that's the criticism of the game right that's actually a big criticism of gray zone yeah well and i i think the the one video I saw um, was like showing it in the like a asset, like a starter level, you know, like it was like a red character model, and like a tiled white thing. And then they had like some shadows like you cut the you cut TSR on and you cut it off and it's like, you know, fuzzy and then not fuzzy like the shadows. But point being is Lumen's really cool. And also there's like. It sucks that. I don't know. If I do try it again, I'll try the the um, TSR thing because, yeah, like, quite frankly, I ended up going with DLSS because it just looked better, but, like, all the other options, FPS-wise, was basically the same, except for frame generation, which, you know, we already talked about frame generation last time, <laughs> so I won't harp on that. But anyways, that's enough, like, nerd talk. <laughs> more That's nerdy important. talk than normal especially with like gray zen i think it's important you know you've got a new game that's most people who've got like semi-decent rigs like it's yeah it's it's, it's ue5 and it's quite hard to run mm -hmm. kind of through some design choices and like on people's reasonable hardware it's you know 40 50 fps um you know if you've got like i don't know a 50 600 x and a 3060, well, yeah, you're quite quite easily getting 30, 40 frames, I think. You know, like, so, you know, it's like my PC, 50, 100X 3D, and a 3070. I don't think it's like a bad rig. We talked about this before, and I get, you know, 55 off stream. Whatever. Um, so it's, yeah, I mean, it raises a lot of questions. Like, it, it sharpens people's mind about performance when they suddenly don't get it. <laughs> you know, like, if, you, if you're getting 100 frames and you kind of like, ah, oh, whatever, you know, it's, fine like i wish it was a bit higher but like who cares um because you get more leeway but yeah when it's like 
into the unplayable territory. It does make people think like, okay, what should we do here? Like people then are scrabbling around for every optimization they can mm. have, you know, upgrading these drivers, changing stuff in RegEdit, like, oh, you know, changing this, <laughs> turn, turn, turn hags on, turn hardware optimization off when it in admin mode is uh, Windows compatibility mode for Windows XP, you know, it's like you're trying to do every single possible thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. This was, this was one thing I did that's related and I'll be quick is someone had commented because like I guess it was the previous cast I looked at their uh, minimum requirements and I was like there's no way you could like use this CPU and this 1080 and get so it actually someone actually commented so they said uh, they're playing on a GTX 1080 um, and an i7 4790 which if I recall correctly if I looked it up it's an older generation than the minimum respects, um, like a generation or two older, if I recall, but it has more cores, um, this person's. Okay. So, like, they recommended, like, a six-core, um, fifth-something gen generation Intel, where this person has, like, the previous generation, but it's, like, seven cores. So it's a little bit better on the CPU side. And they're playing at 1440p, and they get 35 FPS without frame generation. Like, well, that's like really crazy. Like, I'm kind of like, you know, I'm not like super. I don't know. Maybe the CPU's doing a lot of lifting. I don't know. But then I was like, oh, well, are you using any upscaling? And so they said they play on FSR balance. Performance gets too blurry to make anything out, uh, but not frame generation because the input lag uh, and the graphics are on low. So for shadows and effects on medium. Which brings me to the big thing I was like kind of forgot about was Junker tweet about that led me down this rabbit holes because he was essentially complaining about how modern games like and specifically Grey Zone force the AI upscaling on you which caused a lot of issues which like in this case it's like yeah with those settings you actually can get 30 FPS but you have to use the in the a some type of upscaling solution which I don't know if that's like my favorite thing you know ah i'm not sure there's a lot of posts i've read about it being like you know it's, it's kind of required because of modern game engines and this and that and the other it's like like how far is this going to go you know how, how much can ai how much work can ai eventually do we're going to be right. we're having like the most hardcore <laughs> most realistic game engine ever but everyone's running it in like 540p and upscaling it to like 4k you know it's like yeah like no wonder the frames are higher because you're running it on like 1080 or like even even lower i don't know there's not even a, a game one. engine anymore it's just a ai you connect through ethernet <laughs> you're running the game the whole thing you know, the whole thing is just uh <laughs> you know dreaming fabrication or whatever. yeah that's insane yeah anyways yeah i don't know we'll see we will see all right um I think that was kind of everything, yeah. Pretty well. Pretty oh, much. I guess I guess just the one one thing there is Hell Divers, my beloved game. I've been playing my friends. It's like ah, uh, I just want to like say one thing about Hell Divers that I love, and I understand it's not the same and everything, but it's just so. I'm reminded how fresh it is to play a game like this, where it's a live service game. It's not like really predatory microtransactions, um, and you pay, you know. Pay a little bit up front. Not my favorite thing in the world, but you know, because they're gonna sell stuff to me, but whatever. They did an up they do updates with balances, and it's like, oh my god, Giga, I love it so much. Cause like uh, I've already played the game enough where I've unlocked like a lot of stuff. And part of the gameplay loop is, you know, you do the missions, you help the cause for Super Earth, and then you unlock metals and you use those metals to buy more side grades is really how it's i'm feeling it you know it's not like a lateral progression it's more like a horizontal and i was you know kind of disappointed that a lot of this like not a lot but like there was some horizontal progression that really was more like downgrades like you know some of these guns were like really bad and there were some clear winners too like the quasar cannon was just like very popular amongst all the i mean it was just super versatile uh or just kind of easy to use also so I did a balance patch and they like changed a bunch of stuff and it's like some of these like like for example there is the revolver pistol that's got like five or six rounds in the chamber and like when you shoot it you have to manually load each round time it takes a long animation forever it's like you do one tiny thing and it cancels out it's like oh my god I gotta like pick it back up where I left off 
Well, they introduced, they buffed it by making it where if you, if it's empty, then you'll do a speed reload of like a, you know, speed loader or whatever. And so it's like, oh, it's like so much more better. That's like actually usable, but it's like gimmicky still. It's like they did so much stuff like that. And I just love it. Like I, uh, I like yearned for it, you know, two or two or a year ago, even in Tarkov. And I just don't think that's ever happening. But God, it was so good. So, yeah, that, that was my one tangent about my love for Helldivers. But what I really wanted to say was Sony tried to pull a fast. I mean, it's not even a fast one, apparently, but. I'm sure most of you are aware of it. Essentially, they were going to force PC to install or like create a PSN account and whatever. And you had to like use that or something or just a one time thing. Perhaps I, I'm not 100% sure on the very specifics, but uh, allegedly there was a thing about it. And the when you launched the game, you had to like, you know, say if you want to make it account or not. And there's like a big covered layer. I don't remember any of that stuff. You know, if I see something pop up, I just click X. I'm not reading nothing. <laughs> I'm trying to play the game. I ain't got time for this. So, anyways. I was the same in fairness. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah. Especially if you want me to go make a Sony PSN account. I don't even have a PlayStation. Why do I need a PSN account? Let me play the game. So, it's like, no, I do not want to install another freaking gamer launcher for your... Just, yeah, anyways. So... Sony made a mandatory rollout starting like and a week later when this announcement came out that players had to sign in, create a PSN account, otherwise they'd not be able to play the game they purchased, which is kind of insane. Like I was like, dang, that's that's pretty that's pretty crazy. Uh, and I was like very upset because it's like, well, I'm not playing this game anymore because I mean, not not that making a PS account is hard or anything, but it's like, it's being forced, I, I don't know, it's just like retroactive, it's also like, I don't own a PlayStation, like, I just hate it so much, and then come to find out, so not only would you not be able to play the game that you bought, but certain countries that didn't have the ability, or like the, I, I, I'm not really it's, it's actually active in those countries, you cannot get a PSN account if you're in Outside of the 69 countries, I think, the PSN act, like works in, if you're not okay. in those countries, you can't get a PSN account. It is not possible. Right. And I don't know why, but that's just how the world works. And so yeah. these people were basically SOL. They, their product would be dead after a thing, which is like also kind of insane. It's like, what is happening? Sold worldwide on Steam. Right. So and then, then they like, try to like change stuff and like you know like oh now we're gonna change it to where you can't buy it anymore if you're not in one of these countries it's just like the whole thing was a big like it blew up and uh i'm glad that gamers won <laughs> so sony back down like you know what we hear your blah 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 very corpo answer but thank god like gamers is united and uh <sighs> I love this game too much to have it be Sony. It's like, God, the game is so good, Giga. It's like, yeah. I mean, I, I know they had like eight years or so to like cook it up and make it, you know, ready to release. And, you know, it's great. But it's like, man, I would love to play more games like these. And I want to like, you know, play the game. So it would really suck if uh, Sony had to screw that over for everyone. Did you see, because you people were like review bombing Helldivers, right? Because <laughs> yeah. of the, the All stuff. my friends review bombed Helldivers, by the way. Did you see the cape that yes. someone came up with in the community <laughs> to potentially be added? Which I think they might. I it's really hope the they do. Ever. It's like the Steam, because it's, it's a depiction, it's basically the chart that you can look at. I don't even know where you look at this, to be honest, because I've never really bothered. But you can look at Steam reviews on like a time basis with like a time axis along like the x-axis so you can see like there's sort of changing trends and when you look at the chart of you know held i was reviews it's kind of like just trundles along da, 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 da. and then it's just like huge negative big red bars appearing as people change their positive review or all no review to a negative review after purchasing and so this this cape is like 
the big red bars of negative, and then suddenly the green bars as everyone swung it back after Sony changed the decision, which is like, if they add that to the game, it would be like the funniest thing ever. In fairness, the devs of Helldivers were like on side with the community. Um, and the CEO talks quite openly on Twitter about quite a lot of stuff, being like, you know, this is Sony's decision, not our decision, and we, we're trying to fight against it. And yeah, like, you know, this was always technically coming, but we had some issues with the game when we first launched. There you go. That's the is that is that the one? It yeah, well, it's, it's, it's a different version. Yeah, it's, of it's one. on the theme. Yeah, which is pretty good. But um, I did see like so many funny posts about like you know, you know, imagine just like making a game where you get you, the community <laughs> to all work together and you become the community's <laughs> greatest foe. Like we've been all training for this moment for months. Like <laughs> we know what we need to do. Oh, here's another one. It's this one's really good. good. Yeah, that's the one. That's the that one. one's really that good. One. It, looks so cool. it looks so, so cool. So I really hope they add it. It'll be really good fun. Yeah. Um, I haven't actually had time to play Helldivers recently, but um, I want to go back to it. Like, I haven't played since they did the balance patch, but I'd like to, because oh, it's, it's, it's so much fun. But um, yeah, we've all just like, been busy and stuff, especially mm. me, with yeah, various drama and Tarkovy things and turmoil and whatever, mm. but... Not had time, but yeah, I'd like I'd like to go back. I've so far, and you know, it's cool because there is like, micro, well, there's like microtransactions for the war bonds, or whatever. But like so far, I've been able to pay for all of the war bonds using the in-game super credits yeah. to get missions, which is quite cool. I've enjoyed doing that because you get super, you unlock super credits as you go through the normal war bonds, so that really helps. You get like, I can't remember, it's like five hundred or something per. So it's like you you get halfway to your next one just by unlocking the previous one with medals, which is quite cool. So, no, I like it. It's good. I'm glad that, again, the game has prevailed. So it's almost, I don't know, I don't know whether you call the Tarkov one a win, but it is mostly, I would think. Um, this is definitely a win. So game is winning at the minute, you know, the power of activism and online, you know, these various devs and publishers, whatever, they don't want to burn the golden goose. I look, a lot of people thought that Sony was literally just going to sacrifice the golden goose on the altar of corporatism at one point. No, it, was, <laughs> it, was, it was very much like that. It was, actually, I, yeah. Thank God they didn't. Everyone's like, "Oh my God, you're like, you're literally going to kill like Game of the Year 2024 for like, real, what, like, for this for the PSN account linkage." And you know, in the UK, like you have to give you have to give them like a photocopy or a scan or whatever of like official like government UK it's identification, crazy. whatever. Like you have to like photocopy your passport, and, like send it to Sony so you can get a PSN account in the UK. I think, like, I think the UK has got like particularly restrictive requirements. I don't know why, but apparently here it's like crazy. I think I probably already have one because I have a PS3. Um, not that I played on it for like six years, mm. but um, I think I technically have a PSN account, so I could probably mm. just reset the password and log in if it needs to be. But yeah, apparently, like getting a new one, if you're like an Xbox guy or whatever, apparently, like getting a PSN account from scratch is like really hard in the UK. I'm not sure why. So, weird. Yeah. It was the whole thing was weird, but uh, yeah, we all just banded together from our basement dungeons and won the day like the heroes we are. <laughs> well said. All right. Um, it's half past midnight. Yeah. Time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, man, I've been like, I couldn't believe it was already five o'clock for me when you uh, DM'd me. I was like, dang, time flies. I've been like sucked into just really quick. I said the Giga sucked into modding, and it's just, yeah, it's it's a nightmare. Just like, if you ever want to play an old game, just do a tiny like install two mods that's it just stop there stop while you're ahead yeah that's it <laughs> i'm glad we got i'm glad we managed to make it work though i didn't want to like go off the rails already after like two weeks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm glad we managed to make it work so now next week i'll probably record like I, i'll tell you when i'm getting back i'm not 100 sure yet so i'll tell you when i'm getting back and then we can uh we'll do something over the weekend maybe so we'll, yeah well once i'm home then we can do it so at least we can post on monday you know Sounds good. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you all next time.